Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Today, we're going to take our Facebook discussion a step farther. And if you don't already have a Facebook page, I would suggest going back and listening to our 101 webinar on the Cornerstone Resource Center, where I cover getting started on Facebook and the information that you need to know about the platform. First, we're going to start with a little bit of housekeeping, as per usual. Your phones will be muted throughout the webinar, but if you have a question, you can type it into the question box. We'll have a short Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you don't already know, my name is Jess Larkin, and I'm the Marketing and Communication Specialist at Cornerstone. My information is right there on the screen if you'd like to get in contact with me. Also, give us a follow on social media. We post industry and Cornerstone updates and information. Go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube to give us a follow. Check out Cornerstone's COVID-19 information pages on the Cornerstone website, where we post the latest carrier and legislative guidance and information regarding the virus. These pages are updated daily with the latest information, so check that out on the Cornerstone homepage. Autopilot is a compensation-based client referral program that offers the services of licensed representatives to, quote, enroll, support, and provide year-round service to clients that may fall out of your business scope but never off your radar. Activate Autopilot today, and you can learn more about that on the Cornerstone website. Who loves cash? I sure do. Cornerstone's 2021 Agent Incentive Program rewards you for your new group and individual sales. The top 20 qualifiers are going to receive cash prizes up to $5,000, plus one lucky qualifier is going to win a weekend getaway, and a weekend getaway sure sounds nice to me right now. You can register online for that at crnstones.com. All right, with that said, let's get started talking about Facebook and what you can do to improve your strategy. Like I mentioned, today we're going to take Facebook one step farther, and we're going to keep it real short and sweet today. This webinar is going to be ideal for those of you who currently have a Facebook page and are looking to increase your engagement, your following, and improve your posts using the free tools and insights that are readily available on Facebook. This is going to be a review of the most basic analytics that you can use to track your Facebook traffic. We won't go too into detail about what you can get with paid advertising and targeting in this webinar, especially since we covered it briefly last time, but that would be a great topic for a Facebook 301 webinar. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the survey after we're done today. If you have a Facebook page and you're posting, you may run into a bit of a plateau, and perhaps you got a lot of likes when you first started, but now the likes aren't coming in, or maybe you've been lucky to start with a decent following, but you're struggling to gain more followers. There's a number of metrics to consider changing for your strategy if you don't feel like your profile is growing as much as you'd like. First, we're going to talk about your insights, which will give you a good idea of your page's current success. Your insights are your profile's analytics. And just like when you're doing market research to improve your sales, measuring and tracking your analytics can help you improve your marketing efforts over time. There's a number of templates online that you can use to track this data on a monthly basis so you can determine the growth of your profile. Um, I would recommend downloading a really simple social media analytics tracker from online to begin tracking your insights so that you can see month to month what's working and what isn't. I found a simple tracker online, which you can see a screenshot on the screen right now, that helps you break down the number of likes, comments, shares, et cetera, that you receive within a specific date range. And I'll put a link to that template in the chat box right now so that you can take a look. All right, the link is in there. If you'd like to um, gain access to that tracker, it's through um, Google Sheets. Um, so you'll be able to continually go back and add to it if, if this is something that works for you. And it, you can use it on a number of different social media platforms as well. It works not just for Facebook, but for, but for Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, YouTube, whatever kind of social media that you're using for your business. So this is just a good way to track all of your analytics over time. So all of the things that we're going to be talking about today, you'll be able to track it on this specific tracker um, and compare month to month exactly what that looks like and track your growth. 
So to do that, to fill out this analytics tracker, we're going to need to take a practical look at the Facebook Insights page. So as you can see, we can check the page views, the post reach, the page likes, and more based on organic and paid content over time. And what you're seeing here is when you go to your Facebook page and you click on that Insights button, this is the page that's going to pop up for you. This data gets even more detailed as you review your page, and most of the metrics that we're going to talk about today can be measured under the post section of your insights, which lays out the metrics for each individual post. So let's walk through each of those metrics. So like I said, this is the basic page summary on this page under insights, but we're going to take a look at specifically the post section, which reviews your most recent posts so that we can see how specific posts are doing against each other. Most of the information that you're seeing right now on the screen is information that comes about the page in general. But the metrics that you want to pay close attention to when you're first starting your page are engagement, reach, impressions, and your referral traffic. So first we're going to talk about your engagement, which is the number of times someone took an action on your post. That's clicking a link, sharing your post, making a reaction, leaving a comment. Under the post section of your insights, which is the page that you're seeing right here, there is a column called engagement that tracks your post clicks, reactions, comments, and shares. And let's see if I can go ahead and draw where that is. You can see it right here. This is the engagement section. So these are the most recent posts. And then this is the engagement section right here. And that's what you'll be looking at to see what your engagement for um, your page is. You can also use third party tools like Sprout to help you track your analytics more clearly. But if you're just starting out on Facebook, your insights can provide a lot of the help that you need. So I would just start with these basic insights that you see here. High engagement is a good indicator that your followers are interested in your content. If you have low engagement, it may be time to rethink the content that you're posting. Consider trying something different, like rewording your posts or sharing content at a different time of the day. Are you continually posting the same kind of content? Are you only posting links from your blog? Have you tried to post something different, like a video or a live Q&A session? Changing up your content strategy um, will help you determine what your followers want to see. Track your engagement as those new posts are released so that you can determine what your audience is most interested in. So a post with more likes, comments, or shares is going to indicate that your audience enjoys that content and would like to see more of it. So that's where the engagement is really important to track. A post with fewer likes, comments, and shares is going to indicate that you're posting at the wrong time or it's just not interesting enough for your audience to interact with. So if you are experiencing lower like ratios than you typically would, that's something to consider that, you know, you might need to change up your content or you might be posting at the incorrect time for your audience. It's also important to note that visual content like photos and videos are 40 times more likely to get shared on social media than other types of content, according to an article on HubSpot. And the same article notes that people spend more than three times more time watching a Facebook Live video on average compared to a video that's no longer live. So I would try out some prepared Facebook Live sessions. As I had mentioned in the first webinar, a good start is a Q&A session where you give your followers a chance to ask you questions about all things health insurance. So set up some sort of Facebook Live and try to get some followers to join in on it and ask you some questions that will um, solidify that you are an expert and it will also get people engaged in your content. If you've joined in on my social media webinars, in the past, you know that I have a list of questions that I ask myself before I post anything on social media. And there's a reason that I continually bring this reference up when I'm talking about social media. These questions are going to help you determine what posts are right to share on your social media platforms, both professionally and personally. I suggest looking through these questions as you construct your posts before deciding to share. 
So the first question, if you're already familiar with these, is does this post represent my brand? Does this post add value to my followers or is it just going to be noise? What is your goal for this post? Will the post spark conversation or encourage engagement? And would you share this post with a friend? Walking through each of these questions in terms of posting the wrong type of content, it's important to consider that maybe you're posting about the same topic too often. Maybe your posts are too sales driven and not education driven. Maybe the post isn't exciting enough to interact with. Did you include links, pictures, videos, et cetera? This is where trial and error is going to become a big part of your strategy. You want to experiment with different posts to see what your audience likes. Of course, you can give some, I can give you some stats about what's going to typically work on Facebook, but it's going to take time and a detailed process to determine what is right for your specific audience. And just remember that your social media profiles are a direct reflection of your business identity, so you want to be sure that you're putting your best face forward. I've also mentioned a couple of times already the importance of honing your posting schedule. You may be posting at the wrong time of day, or you may be posting too often, or not enough throughout the week. For example, if you work primarily in employee benefits and your clients are in the workforce, you might want to consider posting early in the morning before work or during lunchtime when clients may be checking their social media or even after the workday ends around 6 o'clock. That might help your followers see your content at the right time of day for them to engage with the post. The post section of your analytics also provides um, also provides a very useful indicator of the times that your fans are likely to be online. So as you can see on the page right here, it's, there's a section called when your fans are online. And that's gonna show you the peak hours at when your audience is actually looking at their social media platform. So that's a very important insight for you to look at. Um, so that's just under the insights. And then you click on that post tab, like I said, and that's gonna be top front and center for you to review. So make sure you're looking at those and checking to see if the um, peak hours are when you're actually posting. So right here, you can see that the peak hour for me would be about four o'clock. Should probably be posting about four o'clock or um, about 11 o'clock right here or about 6 a.m. That's probably um, the best time for um, this page to be posting to reach its audience. If you, all, if you don't know where to get started with creating valuable content for your followers, Facebook also offers an incredible feature under the same section that allows you to watch the pages of other businesses within your industry to find out what kind of posts and content works for them. So as you can see at the top, I've highlighted top posts from pages you watch. This will help you gauge what kind of content your audience would like to see. However, like I said, your audience is completely unique to you, so you'll want to make sure to conduct trial and error studies to determine the exact right strategy for your business. It's never going to be exactly linear for you. You're going to have to kind of tinker with it and find out exactly what works best for your audience. You can track the success of your new schedule and your content by reviewing the reach. So the first metric that we looked at was engagement. Now we're gonna be looking at reach. Reach is the number of people that your content is seen by on Facebook. Determining reach helps you determine what your audience likes and why certain posts outperform others. You can determine your reach in the post section like we've been talking about or by using your general insights. So while engagement is going to track how many people interact with your post, reach just tracks who sees your post. The so next metric that we're going to talk about is impressions. So while reach tells you how many people saw your post, impressions are going to measure the number of times that your posts were seen. That includes if one post was seen multiple times by a single user. And as with other insights, you can check that metric under the post section by clicking on the drop down under reach and changing it to impressions. 
So that's important to note because that means that that person might have seen it shared on another friend's profile or it might be popping up enough for them to be able to see it. So that content might be um, might be uh, hitting the right spots for it to be shared multiple times. So impressions are really important for you to check as well. That's also going to give you a good indicator of what your how your um, content is doing online. The last metric that we're going to talk about is referral traffic, or how many people have come to your website from Facebook. This is only going to be a useful metric if you currently have a website. As always, I highly recommend you get your business set up with a website. It makes recruitment, retention, and your digital strategies way more effective in more ways than one. I've seen a couple businesses over the years that only have a Facebook profile and don't have a website, thinking that they work the same. They both work best in conjunction with the other. So to track your referral traffic from Facebook, you'll need to use a tool called Google Analytics. And if you'd like to learn more about Google Analytics, let me know in the survey following this webinar. We don't have time to cover it much today, um, but we do have a webinar coming up in conjunction with Tech Tuesday about creating a website that we can um, touch on Google Analytics in there. So let me know in the, um, in the survey following this webinar if that is something that would be interesting to you. If you do have Google Analytics linked up to your site, you can determine if your referral traffic from Facebook, um, if you if you got referral traffic from Facebook, and you can determine that under the acquisition section, um, and then you're just going to click on social and network referral. So if you have Google Analytics set up, that is how you get there. So click on acquisition, social, and then network referral. You want to track these metrics because the ultimate goal of your Facebook page is conversions. You want people to like your Facebook page to go to your website, sign a contact us form, and get in contact with you. That's the strength of having a Facebook profile in your arsenal and any other social media for that matter. So we've talked about your insights and we've discussed some small changes that you can make to your posts, but how can you optimize your actual profile? So the page that people go to when they first try to review your business. In the first webinar, we talked a lot about the importance of a well-constructed profile with a call to action button, a well-rounded about page, an organized layout, consistent posts, and great visuals. Ensuring that you have all of the elements of your Facebook page rounded out is the very first step to gaining a loyal and engaged following. So the first thing that you wanna do is ask yourself, number one, how do your profile photo and your cover photo look? Are the images grainy and difficult to see, or are they crisp, clear, and sized properly? Does your cover photo act as a piece of advertising by itself, or did you use a stock photo? These, are, they're, these seem like small questions, but they're very important for when people do come to your page, and they make a big difference on the amount of people that are going to choose to follow you. So for something like cover photos, I would suggest highlighting your vision or mission statement, using a picture of your staff, or using that um, real estate as a way to highlight something that you're looking to advertise at this moment. Is your call to action button user friendly? So does it easily direct potential or current clients to an email or phone number that is continuously checked? You don't want that call to action button to just go to an email that is only checked once a week. You wanna make sure that you're keeping up with that um, so that if people do come from Facebook, you are able to uh, react quickly. Number three, how about your profile layout? Do you have tabs available that don't need to be there like shop or offers? Number four, is your about section filled out with descriptions, hours of service, emails, websites, phone numbers, et cetera? And number five, have you checked your direct messages and your notifications? And are you making sure to respond to any messages or comments that come your way in a timely manner? Now, these are all things that we talked about in the first webinar. So if you'd like a review of those, you can go back and watch the first one. Um, but they do really make a difference. So I highly encourage that if you are having struggles with uh, gaining more followers or 
getting out of that plateau, go back to basics and review your profile and make sure it's exactly what you want it to be or change it up a little bit. Maybe your about section, you can change up some of the wording with your mission or um, your story. Um, just try out a couple different things. Like I've emphasized, it's going to be a trial and error process. If your profile is strong and you have all of the boxes ticked, so all of these numbers, um, you've done those and it, it looks good to go, maybe it's time to ask some other questions about your content. There are some common mistakes that first-time business profile users make as they try to get their content off the ground. So the first mistake is perhaps the page is too robotic. One very important aspect of using social media as a business is ensuring that you're posting enough personal content. A great tip that I've learned from working in social media is to communicate through Facebook like a person, not like a company. This makes your profile and content far more approachable and not as black and white. This could mean sharing photos of volunteer initiatives, taking pictures as you patronize a client's business, celebrating birthdays and promotions, etc. Make your profile more human and less sales driven. The second mistake is posting too much of the same content. Don't be afraid to use humor. Your audience is more likely to engage with your content if you make it engaging. Remember that your clients jump onto Facebook when they're in a position of leisure. Therefore, they wanna see easy reading content and content that's going to entertain them. Try out some harmless humor on your profile and see how your audience reacts. I know that I'm far more likely to share a business's post if it's funny. A third mistake is not being consistent with your posting schedule, like I've mentioned before. Um, posting between two or three times a week is probably going to be the aim, but based on your insights, you may want to publish more or less, but you want to make sure that it's consistent. You'll be able to see if, it's, if you're posting too much or if you're posting too little but you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you make it consistent. So if you're gonna be posting two or three times a week, maybe you post every Tuesday and Thursday, or you post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Facebook isn't a site that you can just master within a couple of months of posting. It's going to take time, attention, and trial and error to create a successful Facebook page that continually drives traffic to your website. And while it's easy to get started, it does take time to bring your profile to where it needs to be. So you wanna pay special attention to your analytics and treat your Facebook business page like an extension of your sales strategy because it's just as important. Okay, now we have some time to take on some of your more pressing questions. So if you have something that you'd like to ask me, feel free to type it into the chat box. Um, while we're waiting on any questions, um, I just want to let you know not to forget to register for our other upcoming webinars in this series and in others. So coming up next, we have a form fire quoting webinar. That's this Thursday at 10 a.m. And that's going to review the improved form fire quoting process. So you can register for that on the Cornerstone website. The next Build Your Brand webinar is going to be a joint effort with Tech Tuesday, all about websites. Like I said, if Google Analytics is something that you'd like to learn about, let us know in the survey after this webinar, and we will um, put that together for you. And that's that webinar is just going to pull back the curtain and show you a quick behind the scenes look at how simple it is to create and maintain your website if you don't already have one. So you can learn how to quickly and easily build a functional and successful website in one day. So that webinar is going to take place on June 9th at 9.30 a.m. and you can register on the Cornerstone website. Um, one question that I got was, do you have a good resource for friendly and funny content? I don't have a particular resource in mind. Um, I would suggest maybe looking up like 
health insurance cartoons on Google or health insurance memes online um, and seeing what's there. As always, though, I would just make sure that your humor content is appropriate. Just don't do anything that's political or um, religious in nature so as to not offend anybody. Uh, can you give us the name of the tracking tool that you mentioned earlier? So there are a couple of different tracking tools that you can use to track your analytics. Um, the one that I had mentioned earlier was called Sprout. Um, so that's just one of the many tools that are available online once you get more into the weeds of trying to track your um, analytics. And that's particularly helpful if you have something, um, if you have multiple social media profiles. Um, it will help you with Facebook, but um, your insights that you can find for free online are going to be um, just as useful for you. So I would start off with the Facebook insights, um, but something like Sprout, or um, I know that if you have HubSpot connected to your website, they um, you can track analytics through there. Um, but really, Facebook insights, if you're just tracking Facebook, um, is a great, great place to start. And the other tracking tool for your website that I was mentioning is um, Google Analytics, uh, which is something that's connected to your actual website. Um, so it's connected to that domain and it tracks the web traffic that comes in. And because it is connected to your um, website, you're able to track where the conversions came from. So like I said, there was a way for you to track if those conversions came directly from um, Facebook. So if you do have Google Analytics set up, you can go to acquisition and then social and then network referral, and that's going to tell you what that traffic looks like coming from Facebook. What kind of tech do I need to do a Facebook Live event? A camera, sound settings? So if you're doing a Facebook Live event, you are able to do it straight from your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you are able to do it straight from your cell phone. So if you have Facebook downloaded as an application on your cell phone, um, you can host a Facebook Live event on your business page directly from your cell phone. Um, if you want to do it from your laptop, you will need some sort of um, web camera. So you can buy one pretty cheap or most laptops do have one these days. Um, and you don't need anything fancy with sound. Typically, it's just a very simple um, web setup. Um, but if you do have an iPad or if you have a cell phone, you can do it directly from there. And sometimes that might make it seem a little bit more personal too, especially if you're like holding the camera vlog style and you're just, you know, kind of talking into it. Um, but there are also tripods that you can buy for pretty cheap off of Amazon that you can set up your phone onto um, to keep the phone stable um, so that it's not kind of knocking around the whole time. If you are looking to do a lot of Facebook Lives in the future, it might be good to invest in one of those. Um, I know uh, Cornerstone, we have a couple of, um, of tripods that we can use because the phone that you have is probably very high quality as far as videos and pictures are concerned. So we have a, a tripod in the office that we can record video. Um, so that might be something to invest in if you're looking to do more um, video content. And I've mentioned in the past as well that if you do want to do more video content, which like I mentioned is going to be more successful on Facebook, um, I would recommend the service Vyond. So I can write that down in the chat box, Um, And that's a really easy tool that you can use to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to create cartoon videos. Um, so you could do a very simple, basic video about like, um, you know, you can do a video about HSAs, you can do a video about self-funding, you can do very basic 101 videos that you share on your Facebook as well. Um, or you could do um, a video on why you would even want to buy health insurance for those um, who are prospective clients. Um, sharing that kind of content on Facebook usually does pretty well. Uh, 
Okay, it looks like that's all the questions that we have for today. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact me at jlarkin at crnstones.com. Thank you all for joining us today. Like I mentioned, we have a couple of webinars coming up, so check those out on the events page of the Cornerstone website. We have a Boger brand webinar every other week. And thank you all for joining us. You'll receive a copy of this presentation in the next day or two, and it's going to be available on the Cornerstone Resource Center. If you have a couple minutes after this webinar, please take a moment to fill out the survey that we have prepared. Um, your feedback is incredibly important to us, and it ensures that we continually provide value. And everyone have a great day and stay safe out there.